Okay, in this video we're going to talk about strong acids and strong bases. In future lectures we'll talk about weak acids and weak bases, but today we're going to focus on the strong ones. So you should remember from previous courses, previous chemistry courses, that there's seven strong acids. We're going to define exactly what strong means and what qualifies for strong, but these strong acids are HCl, hydrochloric, HBr, hydrobromic, HI, HNO3, H2SO4, HClO3, and HClO4, so nitric, sulfuric, uh, chloric, and perchloric acid. Now, what constitutes something being a strong acid? And the definition here goes back to our definition of electrolytes being strong or weak. And a strong electrolyte is something like sodium chloride. Because we know when we put this in a, a solvent where it dissociates or is soluble like water, it completely separates, right? 100% into Na plus and Cl minus, or near enough to 100% that it's okay to approximate as 100%, right? So that's a strong electrolyte. And so by the same notion, how we're going to define a strong acid here is something that separates entirely into its constituent parts. For example, if it's hydrochloric acid, then when we put this in water, it completely separates into H plus and Cl minus. Now, more formally, you might say that it's in an aqueous environment, so it's really HCl plus H2O. And in previous lectures, we've learned about different definitions, Arrhenius, Bronsted, Lowry for acids, where in acid, one definition is that it donates a proton. This HCl acting like an acid is going to give up or donate its H plus. In here, H2O will act as the base. So this H plus gets together with H2O and makes H3O plus. That's called the hydronium ion. And what's left, of course, is the Cl minus. So there's still this dissociation, right? Still this strong electrolyte type of behavior. But this is typically how we think about it instead in the acid picture. Okay, so this is the behavior that constitutes a strong acid. And all seven of these will qualify as this essentially 100% dissociation. So remember when we're talking about equilibrium, oftentimes we'll draw a double arrow. The thing about strong electrolytes or strong acids is it's basically 100% this way or close enough that we can approximate it as a single arrow. And so that's what we're doing here in this case. Now, for the monoprotic strong acids, We'll talk more about this in a future lecture, but this means when it has one proton to donate, you'll see in some of these, like sulfuric, there's two hydrogens that can donate. So we'll ignore that special case for now and talk more about it later. But for the monoprotic ones where there's only one proton, like all these other acids, for this HCl, 100% of the H becomes H3O+. And so it's fair to say if you have a one molar HCl solution, then that means really in that solution, that aqueous solution, there's one molar of hydronium ions because the acid's completely dissociated. And so this allows us quite easily to figure out the pH of a strong acid because we've learned in previous lectures that this P essentially stands for negative log of. So it's negative log of the H concentration, H plus or H3O plus. We can use those things interchangeably. And so the pH of a strong acid, if it's a one molar, HCl solution or one molar any acid solution, then that's essentially one molar H3O plus and the pH is then negative log of that concentration. So this is pretty straightforward when we're talking about practice problems that ask you something like this. What is the pH of a 0 0.040 molar solution of nitric acid? Feel free to pause the video here and try it yourself before I go on and solve it. So since HNO3 is one of these seven, strong acids, here it is right here, then we know we can use this convenient little shortcut that to get the pH of this concentration of solution, well, that's the same as saying there's 0 0.040 molar of H3O plus, right? Or H plus, however you want to think about it. And so to get the pH, the pH is just negative log of that value, 0 0.040. Right, since that is the H3O plus concentration. 
So negative log of 0 0.04 comes out to a pH of 1.4. And that's all there is to it, simple. Now you can have the conceptual check. This is a solution that is just a strong acid, presumably in water, an aqueous solution. So if it's just a strong acid, then the pH should be pretty acidic. And this indeed is a low number, very low, uh, less than seven, so we know it's acidic. And it's quite acidic being 1.4 towards the bottom of this uh, pH range. Okay, so this is indeed a very acidic solution. And so we can be pretty, pretty sure that we didn't mess up the calculation since it makes perfect sense for this 0 0.04 molar solution. Now, if we want to instead talk about strong bases, the same type of thing is going to apply here. There's still strong electrolytes, and these are the soluble hydroxides, okay? Where hydroxide, of course, is OH minus. And so these will be the alkali metals like lithium hydroxide, right? Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, anything in that first alkali metal row. And then the heavier of the second group, the alkaline earth metals, like calcium hydroxide. And don't make the mistake here. Remember, calcium is two plus, OH is minus, so we need two of these. Or strontium hydroxide or barium hydroxide. Okay, so these will be, you can write out the, the rest of them, and I'm not gonna do it here, but you have rubidium and cesium, et cetera, uh, down the periodic table in the alkali uh, metals, and then the heavier of these alkaline earths, presumably, or uh, notably these three. So these substances are all strong electrolytes. They dissociate pretty much completely, and so it's fine to use a one-way arrow here saying that the equilibrium is essentially 100% with products. So in this first case, lithium hydroxide is going to completely dissociate to lithium and OH minus. Now, be careful because in the second part, once you have multiple OHs, Realize that you're going to make one of the cation, calcium 2+, plus, but you're going to make two, due to stoichiometry, of the OH minuses. And we can be asked to calculate a pH, which we know is negative log H+, plus, or we might think about calculating a pOH, negative log OH-. minus. If you're asked to calculate a pH, of course, remember that the OH minus concentration times the H plus concentration, or H3O plus, is 1 times 10 to the negative 14 kW of water. This is at 25 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit different as you change the temperature, but this is the number we usually memorize and will use. So let's put this into practice and try a problem on a strong base. What is the pH of a 0 0.0011 molar solution of barium hydroxide? Feel free to pause the video here and try it yourself before I go on and solve it. So it's good practice here to write the chemical reaction of what's happening here if it's barium hydroxide. And I remember, oh, that's one of these heavy alkaline earth metal hydroxide. So that's a strong electrolyte, a strong base, it's going to completely dissociate to barium 2 plus, to OH minus. But then of course, I remember this two right here means there's two OH minuses. So this is quite important. And one particular, there's two places where students will make problems or have problems with this question. The first is a lot of them will just see this number and just like a strong acid, they'll do negative log of 0 0.0011 molar. But that's wrong for two reasons. First, because this 0 0.0011 corresponds to an OH concentration, not an H+. So if you did this, that's more in line with thinking about pOH, not pH. 
but it turns out here that's not even right, okay? Even if you realize you're taking the pOH when you do that. And the reason is because this concentration of base, okay, is really, due to stoichiometry, a one to two ratio. So this concentration of base that is here 0 0.0011 molar, right? That is for the barium hydroxide. And so you have to think about a mole ratio here. How many barium hydroxides are there per OH minus? And the answer was due to stoichiometry, it's a two to one ratio. So this actually ends up being a concentration of OH minus of 0 0.0022 molar. And this is what we want to use because our pOH is using the concentration of OH. We can't just take negative log of this to get the pOH. So now we can take the negative log of this that we have the right value here, okay? And negative log of 0 0.0022 gives us 2.7. And if you try to report this as a pH, you can see, well, that's a low number. That can't be the pH because that's acidic and this is clearly a base, right? And that's because remember here, we're actually not calculating pH, we're calculating pOH. That's 2.7. To turn this into pH, we remember that pH plus pOH is always 14, which means that pOH Sorry, that pH, if we rearrange this, is 14 minus pOH. And so my pH here will be 14 minus 2.7, in other words, 11.3. And now that looks good because that's a number on the pH scale that is clearly very basic. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a lot of calculations like this throughout many lectures in general chemistry, particularly when we get to titrations and weak acids. So always be aware of whether you're asked to take a pH or a pOH and what you're really dealing with. Now, you could get to here and approach the problem a, a different way, so let's look at that. Once you figure out this concentration, you can realize that, okay, well, and we'll do this up here, this 0 0.0022 molar, of OH, I also know that KW, the acid dissociation of water, is one times 10 to the negative 14, and this is equal to H plus times OH minus concentration. And so since I have OH minus concentration, I could divide both sides by this OH minus concentration to get the H plus concentration. Okay, so you can rearrange this and get the pH, uh, or you can get the H plus concentration, and then take negative log of that value, and you should get the same number, 11.3, down here. Okay, so all I'm showing you here is you can either take this OH and turn it into H plus, negative log gives you pH, or you can just take negative log of this number, and I think that's easier, less, less room to, to mess up here. Okay, because sometimes dividing by these big exponentials, we enter errors in the calculator, but you can do it that way if you're comfortable. But I would suggest this way where you get the OH, you just take negative log of it to get the pOH and then subtract that from 14. That's pretty easy to do and get 11.3. But either way is completely fine to do. They're the same thing, just different mathematical manipulations. So in this video, we talked about strong acids and strong bases and pH and pOH of those solutions. In future videos, we'll get on to weak acids and weak bases and talk about acid dissociation constants. That's what's coming up next time. See you then.